Hello everyone, this is Mr. Honey here for day 16 of Human Development, and today I am going faceless, so we're going to be sticking mostly with the PowerPoint today, and I will be powering through it as quickly as possible. So, if you guys look, you have a set of questions related to today's PowerPoint, and it's about abuse, where we've talked about it in the past, more along the lines of child abuse, now we're moving more into uh, relationship abuse, so... Uh, I just want to let you guys know that for the first question where you guys are writing about uh, whether or not each scenario is abuse, I'm actually going to be going over each scenario and based off what we talk about, um, you are going to either decide on whether or not it is and give um, your reasons why. Um, I'm not going to go through and review it, um, but what I want you to do is if at any point you wish to change your answer during this PowerPoint, you may go ahead and do that. So um, we're going to go through these scenarios. So the question you're going to be answering is, is this scenario abuse and why or why not? So the first scenario, Ashley's husband has gotten angry with Ashley over an innocent text. She sent a male coworker about scheduling. In a rage, he calls her a string of obscenities. Scenario two, John, overstressed about his relationship, hits his girlfriend. Is this abuse? Scenario three. Jan, angry about Frank spending a lot of time with his friends, suspects him of cheating. She goes through his phone to find a text he sent a female co-worker about a scheduling for next week. <clears throat> she goes through his phone to find a text he sent a female co-worker about a scheduling for next week. A completely innocent text. She reads into it and snaps, slapping Frank and throwing things at him when he enters the house after hanging out with his friend. Scenario four. Jim encourages his wife, Stacy, not to work. Every time Stacy suggests getting a job, Jim gets upset. Stacy then confronts him, stating that he is always complaining about money, but never wants her to work. And then finally, John and Brenna have been together for a while. Brenna, however, has been rather controlling of John, even though John makes more money and has provided more. Brenna seems to complain to him that he isn't putting forth his effort in the relationship. She also manipulates John to alienate himself from his family and friends. And when he wants to go out and spend time with them, Brenna throws a fit, saying that he doesn't love her. And if he keeps acting this way will commit suicide. So write down whether you feel each of these scenarios uh, contains abuse and why or why not. So uh, we've talked about abuse in the past and with relationships, uh, the types of abuse that you exist, um, can, that exist, um, you know, are still for the most part fairly much the same. So we do have physical abuse, which is uh, hitting, kicking, physical harm, basically um, causing any sort of bodily harm to somebody. Next, we have emotional abuse, which is more mind games and manipulation. So, for example, um, you know, trying to alienate someone from their family, um, trying to do things such as uh, hold someone in a relationship by threatening them or threatening suicide. These are examples of emotional abuse. Next, you look into verbal abuse, which are put down, screaming and profanity, basically causing someone, I guess, emotional harm. Um, and, you know, not necessarily causing them physical harm, but causing them emotional harm with your words, putting them down, belittling them, um, making them feel less than human. Then next we have financial abuse, which is one that a lot of people don't really talk about. But this is where people uh, control finances and withhold money to the point where they're holding someone maybe in a relationship because they feel like they cannot uh, get out because of issues with money or for example they're holding the money and controlling the finances to the point where someone who is in a relationship feels that they do not have any financial freedom to do as they please and then finally we have sexual abuse which are coerced sex acts we do have the cycle of abuse and typically this is a cycle that continues until someone uh, terminates the relationship oftentimes there are cases where abusers, for example, um, make improvements and, you know, 
get counseling, get therapy, and relationships do improve. But in this instance of what we're talking about, we are talking about it being a continuous cycle. So first we have the tension building stage, which is where, you know, tensions begin to build. Uh, the abuser can be rather snippy with someone. They're very, very <clears throat> angry. Um, maybe the victim feels as though they have to walk on eggshells. So there's a lot of tension. OK, nothing. Nothing's really happened yet, but there's a lot of tension. Next, we move into the incident stage where the actual act of abuse happened. Curse words. Um, put downs, verbal abuse, hitting, punching, kicking, um, you know, financial abuse, all of it. This is where the actual act of abuse tends to happen. So then once we move from the incident stage, we move into what's called reconciliation, which is where the abuser typically, quote unquote, comes back to their senses and realizes what they've done and then tries to reconcile the situation by offering up some excuse of, oh, well, you know, I'm jealous, or you know what kind of guy I am, or I only act this way because I love you, or, you know, you're different than everyone else who has treated me this way, so when I feel like you're acting like other people, you know, it makes me feel this way, and, you know, they offer up uh, some reason as to why they act the way they act, and then eventually, you know, everyone makes up, things are okay, and then it returns to everything being calm again. But, you know, that can be very short lived as with this being a cycle we're moving back to the tension building stage once again. So if you are if, so if you are ever experiencing abuse, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you tell someone uh, do your best to stand up for yourself and get out of the relationship. It's often very hard to get out of the relationship in many cases with abuse um, simply because, you know, when you. Um, put forth the effort into someone, you know, you develop feelings for them um, and you care about them, you know, leaving them is a lot harder than simply just saying, okay, you hurt me, I'm out. You know, some people do feel that, you know, people can change and some people um, feel that, you know, with counseling and everything else, that, you know, they can um, improve in their relationships. But the big important thing is, is if it gets to the point where, you know, the changes aren't happening or if it is in that point where, you know, you <clears throat> where you are literally experiencing um, psychological, emotional, mental and physical damage to your body, you need to get out of that relationship and it will not be healthy. So it's very important to make sure that you tell someone and, you know, get the right help that you need. So your assignment for today is about Megan Ridgway. Um, she's actually a teenager from South Carolina who experienced um, a good portion of abuse. And her story has influenced a lot of um, movements. Her uh, story has, experienced, has influenced a lot of movements for um, relationships and um, making sure that abuse does not happen in them. So there's an article in Canvas. You're going to go ahead and read that article and then answer the question. And then also make sure that you go ahead and submit these notes. So I will hopefully return on camera tomorrow for you guys. And you guys take care and have a good rest of the day.